What's up? My name is Michael. In this video, I'll be showing you how you can use your iPhone with one hand way easier. So I have some pretty useful tips and tricks for uh, larger iPhones that can be quite hard to navigate if you just have one hand. So the first one is using Siri. So Siri can now do a lot of on-device processing. So that means it doesn't require an internet connection. So I use Siri a lot to open apps, especially apps I don't have on my home screen uh, that I would otherwise have to hunt around my iPhone just to find. So say for example, I wanna open the Compass app. All I have to do is tell Siri, open Compass, open Calculator, open Safari, Open life sum. Take a selfie. So you can see there on that last example, when I told it to take a selfie, it opened the camera and it also opened to the front facing camera. So it is contextual and you can be a little bit more detailed in your requests with Siri. So it's very, very useful, especially if you have one of the newer iPhones with a power button on the right. Uh, since Siri is just one thumb press away, you can pretty much tell it to do anything. And now that it doesn't require the internet and does all this processing on the device, it is much, much faster and it comes in handy way more than you'd expect. Number two is a really quick one. It's called reachability. It's enabled on every iPhone and also iPhones that have a home button. It's a little bit different to activate though, depending on your device. So on newer iPhones, all you have to do is do a little half swipe down near the bottom and it brings the entire UI down. And now you can reach stuff at the top of the screen just like that. If you have an iPhone with a home button, all you have to do is double touch, not even click, just double touch the touch ID sensor and you'll get the exact same uh, UI brought down. So next up, this one is pretty common throughout iOS. If you find yourself in a part of the UI that has a back button on the top left, instead of trying to reach up and click it with your thumb or even using reachability to bring the entire UI down just to click the back button, you can actually just do a uh, back swipe from the left to the right just to get to the previous page. So this is present pretty much everywhere in iOS and it's uh, very, very useful. Okay, this next one is the pinnacle of using your iPhone one-handed. So I'm gonna bring up Control Center and it's not even gonna look like I'm moving my hand. There, can you tell what I did? Uh, I double touched the back of my iPhone and that was able to bring up Control Center. So I'll show you how you can do that now. So open settings and you wanna search for back tap. So back tap is located inside accessibility settings under touch. So if you scroll all the way down, you can see back tap right here. And I have a double tap set up for control center and you can also set up a triple tap for anything you'd like. So let's turn it on uh, for flashlight here. So if I go one, two, three, my flashlight is now on and I can turn it off also with three taps. It doesn't wanna cooperate on video. There we go, three taps will turn it off. So keep in mind, it is a little bit finicky if you mount your phone uh, in your car, for example. So I have a dashboard mount for my iPhone and sometimes the vibration in the car can trigger some of these actions. So just keep that in mind, uh, but it is very, very useful. So next up has to do with the keyboard. So iPhones are pretty wide these days and I have pretty big hands so I can reach the keyboard from edge to edge, but some people have pretty small hands and would like the keyboard to be smaller. Luckily, there is an option for this in iOS. So you see the little emoji button on the bottom left of the keyboard, just press and hold that button and then you'll see a little UI pop up with a little keyboard icon. There's actually three of them. So the middle one is full size. You can click this button to bring it smaller on the right side. And then you can also click this to bring it on the left side for left-handed people. So very, very useful. And also the uh, swipe feature will still work. So I'll change this to the right side. You can see I can still swipe between letters even on the smaller keyboard. So uh, very handy if you wanna make the keyboard smaller and type with one hand. The next tip you can see on my iPhone right now, it's simply load up your home screen with widgets and put the apps that you wanna open closer to the bottom of your screen. So you can see here, I have all of my apps closest to where my thumb is. And that's done on purpose because I don't wanna reach across my screen to open up all my apps. So I have all of my folders and all my apps accessible with just one click at the bottom of my screen. And if you want to open a certain app, but you don't have room to put it in the bottom of your home screen, well, you can just use the tip that I showed you at the beginning of this video and use Siri to launch any app on your iPhone. 
So hopefully you guys learned something new and if using your iPhone one-handed is that important to you and you find your iPhone just too big, well, my final recommendation would be to get an iPhone mini. I know it's kind of silly sounding, but uh, this is the last year of mini iPhones because next year the iPhone 14 is going to be starting at 6.1 inches, which is the size of the normal iPhone 13, and it's going to go up from there. So if you want a nice compact iPhone, you can get an iPhone 12 mini or an iPhone 13 mini and still have the latest chip, uh, great battery life, an awesome camera, and more. So. Uh, like I said, if your large iPhone is bugging you, uh, maybe just switch over to a mini iPhone. This is probably the best time to do it. If you guys found this video helpful, please drop a like on it. Also subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Michael and I'll see you in the next one.